Hello and welcome to a, another episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm Krish Mohan. Before we get into this week's episode, I want to let you guys know that if you would like to support Fork Full of Noodles and DIY socially conscious comedy content, you can donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Everything starts at only $2 a month, so go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha to find out all the details, the different tiers, the rewards, and the goals of what you'd be supporting. All right, now let's dive into this week's episode. And as we keep moving forward, after the prison strike of 2018, people must be wondering, would reforming the system actually work? Right, after all, aren't these scary criminals? Right, why would we want these mustache twirling doomsters out of their concrete boxes? The strike was meant to show that these people can be better human beings. And with thoughts like that mixed in with the degradation of good lifestyle condition, it only proves that they are pushed into more violent and unstable conditions. And therein lies the problem with real prison reform, the way we look at inmates and ex-felons. As I mentioned earlier, we should be looking them as fellow human beings. And a lot of them want to redeem themselves in the eyes of society. But in the eyes of society, they will, are always some kind of subhuman monster that wants to end the world. And we have to change that perspective. Just because justice is blind doesn't mean that we have to be. Now, there are several places that have acted on the principles of the 2018 prison strike. And all right, we are going to start in the United States just to be fair. Yes, the country that hypocritically claims that we have unlimited freedoms like AT&T claims you get unlimited data but has the largest prison population like AT&T has the largest amount of contractual fuck yous. And I am starting here in the States because now people can't sit and claim that I hate America. You know, I, I don't hate America. I just want America to stop hating itself. Okay, America sold itself to corporate power and the whims of the elites, forgetting how the working class and immigrants really built this place. Oh, and slaves. And slaves. Right? I mean, what makes America America is being stomped on and oppressed by itself. I just want America to see that it can be better than an oligarchical corporate shit show. Now that we got that disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about the PACT program that's being implemented in Massachusetts. The People Achieving Change Together program's main goal is teaching responsibility and breaking the cycle, right? This might be the first time that something has tried that hasn't been an initiative of profit. And if responsibility is the main goal of this program, maybe we can put the CEOs of some war profiteering companies in there. You know, teach Lockheed Martin and Raytheon and General Dynamics that they too can shoulder the blame of an exploitative war machine and maybe they should stop funding it. By which I mean themselves. They, they should stop themselves. You know, they could shut down their companies and help rebuild the countries that they've destroyed. PACT operates as a separate unit where jail politics don't exist and the inmates can be off guard. So things that we've seen in shows like Oz and Oz the Next Generation doesn't happen. In the separate unit, they can go to therapy and mandated uh, anger management. And they also have a consistent schedule of work and classes. And this is all to help them re-enter society as functional adults kind of feel like what this this is what school should be and the point is this will decrease recidivism and help at-risk youth but some people like bristol county sheriff thomas hodson claim that we should focus on decreasing at-risk youths in general at the start of all of this instead of pushing experimental programs that restore compassion and empathy 
But unfortunately, Sheriff Hodson wouldn't like to decrease the amount of non-violent crimes that are prisonable offenses like smoking or even knowing what marijuana is. Oh, or, or when cops stop looking at these at-risk youths as the enemy. Or we can decrease the racial barrier between cops and the communities they're supposed to protect and serve instead of harass and separate maybe we wouldn't have so many people at risk. What we are at risk from is the law. Maybe more of America would be able to adopt these experimental practices if people weren't so constantly worried about being number one in everything. I mean, we are competing over excellence in slavery and giving our citizens permanent PTSD. Okay, let's all agree right now that if you are a country that uses slave labor of any kind, you don't even get a participation trophy, okay? Until they decide that they're going to give these people a fair, livable wage in their factories and their prisons, they don't even get a gold star by their name. In Germany, there is a large focus in two aspects for prison. The first is architectural safety. They wanna make sure the environment is safe for the prisoners instead of one where they get an infection and are ignored by the guards, right? They want to create an environment where dropping the soap doesn't just prevent possible prison rapes, but also diseases contracted from a dirty prison shower, right? They, the point is they want to make a, a more comfortable environment for prisoners to focus on rehabilitation rather than Andy Dufresne themselves out of prison. The second thing German prisons focus on is relational safety. They are encouraged to make friends and form bonds, not gangs. That way a, a culture of fear isn't bred in prisons. And freedom from fear can lead to more compassion and empathy in a person. And again, it helps in the rehabilitation aspect of prison reform. And we can totally use these in American prisons, right? If we can't curb violence, from the guards towards the inmates, right? We can just put these puffy gym mats on the wall so when the guards push the inmates against them, they'll just bounce off and come and they, and they land a hug right on that guard, right? That, that shows the guards that they don't need to fear the inmates, right? And even if their dad didn't love them, maybe this reforming murderer does. I feel like this is way better than orange is the new black, right? Compassion is the new orange. Let's head over to Brazil, which has the fourth largest prison population in the world. I mean, they don't even get a trophy for that. Maybe that's why they have such a radical uh, prison reform idea. You know, the Association for the Protection and Assistance to Convicts, or the APAC program, is a prisoner-run incarceration program. It is a prison run by inmates for inmates. APAC doesn't look at prisoners as inmates, right? They call them recuperandos or recovering people. There are three levels to this pr these prisons. A closed section where there's a sign above that reads, the man enters and the crime stays out. And this is where people that have committed the most heinous of crimes are kept in a calm environment. The phrase above ensures that you have an opportunity to not be defined by your misgivings. The semi-open section includes things like running a storeroom or an office, and an open section involves jobs like guarding the door. That's right. Prisoners guard their own doors, and none of them want to escape. Right? They want to stay there and serve their time to show their remorse and better themselves as individuals within a community. It's like uh, being an RA at a college, right? But, but at the end of this, you actually get to learn something instead of just hunting down freshmen that are trying to get their dicks wet. With the environment that they're in, they can focus on returning home to their families and pursuing their passions outside prison, right? Plus, if they do escape, they lose the opportunity to be a part of the APAC system. A sign of remorse is a major quality to be transferred out of the, the violent, unstable prison system where, where to, to one where, where you get to see a light 
at the end of the tunnel because you're actually allowed to hang out in the light. In this system, no one should be in their cells unless they are sick or, yes, faking sick, right? Because this is so close to the outside, people and people call off sick on the outside all the time, I'm sure it's known to happen. Okay, but but in in this situation, they're not really at home playing Xbox in their underwear. They're they're still in some kind of a prison. So I am sure that these prisoners actually have a better attendance record and discipline than most free people. They all have a regimented schedule of work, chores, and extracurriculars, right? They, they sweep the streets, they run the stores, they make labels for the soaps that are made in prison itself, which I am assuming have to have better grips. They have to come with like a better gripping system that they've made in prison, right? And, and they do so much more. They get to re-engage with the community, right? They get to give back. They get to have a sense of purpose and responsibility. This creates less recidivism and some even want to be a part of the APAC system itself. The first thing they do when they get to the APAC is go to the woodworking shop and they work on something with their hands. Right? The idea is that they destroyed something, so now they have to create something to begin their process of redemption. This instills the fact that they are still human beings, and much like the sign above the closed area, they won't be defined by their crime. Overcrowding isn't an issue because they only take in about 200 people per APAC. And this program has had so much success that it is spread over to Ecuador and Chile. And it's hard to get you know, a, a program like this together everywhere because it takes a lot of political will and state involvement. So the people have to be on board with the system to begin with. And then a system has to be less about profit and more about helping people. And we can totally adopt a system like this in the States. I mean, maybe if we adopted a system like this here in the States, then, then bankers wouldn't be so scared to go to prison and they would learn that fucking over the middle class using predatory lending practices isn't right, right? Instead of justifying their actions and looking for corrupt politicians to bail them out in fear of gang shivings and dropping the soap, they would just ask for forgiveness and serve their time, right? And the same can go for violent cops, warmongers, domestic abusers, and anyone that actually wants to redeem themselves in the eyes of people and their communities. Now, I'm sure there are some of you that are out there that are, that are saying that, it, you know, if, if prisons are actually comfortable, then what's the point of punishment, right? Well, the harsh environment, Krish, is what they need to know that they are punished. Actually, the fact that they're away from their families, communities, and loved ones is the punishment. The rest of prison is meant to help them re-enter society, not just be locked up in a box for the purposes of a CEO somewhere that needs to light a cigar with a $100 bill. Aside from the PACT program, there isn't any sort of large-scale prison reform happening in America. And, and, and that part of that comes from the dehumanization of prisoners in the eyes of society. And we need to treat these folks better. We need to be better in our society. They've asked for redemption and we can give it to them, right? In programs like the APAC, Germany's prison system, and even the PACT program help people find their second chance. They are working to break the cycle. So why not let them have a real second chance? That has been your forkful of noodles for this week. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the, the episode, uh, we've got a lot more coming up in the upcoming weeks. Uh, but if you would like to support Forkful of Noodles, uh, this is what I do full time. I uh, uh, tour with comedy. Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian that tours full time and I create comedy content full time. If you would like to support these things, please donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, all of that starts at $2 a month. All of my stuff is going to be available for free. There's very little that's going to be behind a paywall, 
But if you would like to show appreciation and financially support this show, because uh, it's a lot of work to produce a show like this every single week, uh, you can donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash Mohan ha ha. Uh, if you can't support this show financially, I completely understand. Uh, but a great way to help this show is by sharing. Share it with some friends. Share it with some enemies. Share it with anybody you think would enjoy content like this. Uh, and if you would like to, uh, you can follow me, you can like my Facebook page, you can give this video a thumbs up, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at KrishMohanHaha, uh, and you can check out my website, RamenNoodlesComedy.com. I've got live stand-up comedy shows coming up. I'm going to be opening for Lee Camp in California, in San Francisco, and Santa Cruz, and then I'll be working on my full hour of comedy in Lexington, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, I will also be in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, and Lancaster, Pennsylvania. For all of my tour dates, you can go to my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. We've got lots more Forkful of Noodles coming up. I'm very excited to be back. Like I said, if you want to support this show, share the hell out of it. Give it a like. Uh, and donate to the Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, check out all of the links below. Sign up for the email list to get updates uh, every single week or every single month to find out what's going on with me. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for supporting and sharing. Uh, to all of the people that are already patrons, thank you guys so much for, for donating. Uh, it, it means a lot. Every little bit helps. But till the next video... Uh, thanks for getting into it, and we'll see you on the road.